Hello everyone, Gadget Girl Kylie here and welcome back to another episode of Detroit Become Human. Continuing on, we are still playing as Kara. So on the last episode, we got to play a little bit as Marcus and uh, obviously I'd say more so as Kara. So we're in this house at the moment, we've met Todd and we've also met Alice. Alice is the little girl who I'm assuming is Todd's daughter, but uh, Todd is just not a nice guy. He is taking drugs, he seems to be really snappy, and Kara, we started off playing as Kara, being picked up from the AI shop after being severely damaged. So, uh, take what you will from that, but I'm pretty sure Todd is abusive. So let's go upstairs, because we've actually done all of our tasks um, downstairs now. Right, how do I get upstairs? Clean upstairs, okay. That's what I want to do. There we go. I guess I just needed to change the camera angle. Oh my god, this house really is falling to rack and ruin. Look at all the cracks on the walls and stuff. Okay. Oh, guitar. So he's really into sports, it seems. Okay, tech addict, the price of life. How driverless vehicles make life and death decisions. Space tourism, is Mars your next holiday destination? Okay, when a driverless vehicle foresees an accident, the car's computer makes life and death decisions. For example, deciding which of two pedestrians to hit. But the exact process by which cars make these decisions is not very well understood. Martin Forlong of Crown Cars tries to clarify. In these situations, the car's imagining systems gathers data to determine the pedestrian's age, gender, life expectancy, etc. in the blink of an eye. Whoa, that is dark that is really dark um so basically if for sake of example there was an elderly man or woman crossing the road and they had i don't know uh lung cancer or something like that but then there was like a young healthy teenage boy or girl also walking next to them um the car would probably aim for the elderly woman because um she doesn't have uh as good Stats, I guess? Jesus Christ, that is dark. That is very dark. This data is passed through the public record to determine marital status, employment record, life expectancy, and whether they have children. The car then assigns a value to each possible victim based on criteria like their contribution to society. We put a premium on lives that will save other lives like doctors and nurses. Oh my god, that is so fucking dark. Jesus Christ, what do you guys think about that? That is wrong on so many levels, though. That is so wrong. Every life is equal. Every life has value. The car should just not hit anyone. <laughs> okay. Oops, I, I did that wrong there. All right, let's go back. Okay, all this may sound very reasonable. No, no it doesn't. But Felix Gamble, head of Anti-Automation League, AAL, says the system has no right to make such judgments. Somebody with a criminal record is not necessarily less valuable to society than a doctor. That kind of information is irrelevant to the sanctity of human life. Yes, I am in agreement with that, to be honest. But this doesn't surprise me, and I actually think this could legit happen in the future. I mean, aren't there already um, smart cars and stuff that can kind of like... They're, they're working on self-driving cars, I know that, but I don't know how far ahead in the technology they are. So if you have any information about that, guys, let me know in the comments. But the thing is, I could totally see this happening, though. I really could. But Forlong dismisses such claims. We want our cars to make the best best possible choices. 
That means acting on the basis of all the information they can gather, the more the better. Jesus. What a way to start the episode reading that, man. Switch on the TV. And now to sports. First up, basketball. As the gear Not interested in sports. Oh, nice little animated cartoon. I wonder who did the animation of this. If anyone knows, guys, give credit to the artist down below in the comments. This is lovely. I kind of want to watch it and see what happens. <laughs> Let's spend the entire episode watching this little animation on TV. Oh, what's that? Some kind of creature. Oh, it grew wings. It's making me think of um, Trico from The Last Guardian, actually, a little bit. Right, there we go. Uh, it's just on a loop now, guys. Yeah, that kind of looked like Trico a little bit. That was lovely. I enjoyed that. <laughs> There's Alice again. She seems to be following Kara around. She really wants to connect with Kara, but I don't think she's quite sure. Because again, Kara has been reset, so. Okay, American football has largely resisted the spread of Android players, with top tier games still an exclusively human affair. But that may be about to change following CyberLife's recent unveiling of technical demo QB1000, an Android quarterback capable of throwing from end zone to end zone and hitting a target six inches wide. The model is also programmed with over 1,500 plays from classics such as bootlegs and handoffs to more specialized maneuvers, all of which can be adapted in real time. Seriously, this is wrong on so many levels. We're not going to have Android bloody <sighs> bloody players for sports as well. This is ridiculous. This is getting getting way out of hand. Okay, QB1000 was revealed at a recent CyberLife exhibition in Detroit where the Android manufacturer showed a variety of prototypes designed to show the potential of bleeding edge technology. But while CyberLife's latest innovation has some fans drooling, Roy Kenstone, founder of the anti-Android fan group, sees a sinister aspect. CyberLife know exactly what they are doing with this demonstration. They hope to distort our sport the same way they have all the others. Despite these reservations, some consider this simply a matter of time, with basketball and basket Ball, uh, baseball, sorry, already contemplating Android players. Uh, LED Sporting QB might be just around the corner. Oh, hang on. I think there was a next. Right, previous. Never mind. Okay, so close the window, I guess? Oh no, open the window. I thought it was already um, open. Some crisps there. Oh my god, those crisps will be so stale. I thought I was being cocky the other day. I was at Chris's and lately I've been addicted to quavers. And um, I was eating some quavers and we were in his room 
and then like I had two packets okay so bear that in mind and then after I finished the second packet I noticed like one of the quavers had like fallen onto the bed so I was like oh yeah bonus quaver just popped it in my mouth only it was from the previous packet and it was stale as fuck it was disgusting so I was like I put it in and I was just like bleh <laughs> like spat it out straight away it, it, it was not it was not graceful it was not sexy but you know it was funny. <laughs> uh, stale quavers are vile. Watch it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing the job you fucking asked me to do. Not gonna show the cleaning of the toilet. Obviously, it's too vile for camera. <laughs> He's just had a giant shit. <laughs> we can't show that. We can show other things, but we can't show a giant bit of poo in the toilet, apparently. I am being a really obedient AI right now. I should go and speak with um, Alice though. The controls of this are kind of weird. Makes it look really fucking janky. Right, okay. Alice's room. Oh! I just want to tidy up your room a little. I only need two minutes. Is that okay, Alice? She's made a base within her room. Almost like she's hiding. So she can feel extra safe. Alice in Wonderland. Of course. Okay, she's slowly warming up to Kara now. That's a cool little base. I never built anything to that level of awesomeness when I was a kid. We did used to build bases out of chairs and spare blankets and pillows and stuff, but never something as cool as that. I'm jealous of your base building skills, Alice. What about you guys? Did you guys used to build bases when you were a kid? Let me know. I was always jealous of kids that had like tree houses and stuff or um, like there was a craze when I was younger where parents would build like little brick uh, houses in their garden for their kids and I was always jealous of that as well because one of my friends had one of them and it was so cool and I was jealous, I was so so jealous. is in this room. Oh, hello. Seems you like reading. Open the window. Let some air in. Right. You've unlocked a dialogue or action. Often beneficial. Okay. I didn't like the unlocked icon there for that window bit. I think it was just because of the extra dialogue, but still. I feel- I can sense the foreboding in this house. I can sense that something horrible is going to happen, but I feel like we've just created an escape route though. Okay, so is that it? Is that everything in here? Okay, we've got a tidy Todd's room now. Todd's room is going to be the worst, surely. Oh, 
Right, is this Todd's room? Can't go in there. Have I missed something in here then? Because this is Todd's room, right? Oh, hang on. Ah, I didn't see those at first. Antidepressants contains tying... I can't say that word. Dyslexia, I hate you so much. Yep, I know what those are like. Okay, you've unlocked a dialogue or action. Right, okay. It still says I need to tidy Todd's room. Right, TV is irrelevant. I've looked at that. To me, it looks tidy now. I mean, there's some cables down here, though. Maybe here? Nope. Okay, so what's left? It just says Tidy Todd's room. I've done it though. Let's go back to Alice and see if I can do anything in here. Nope, I can't interact with... Oh! Drawings! Can't interact with Alice either. just read let me just slowly walk around and see if anything else triggers oh tidy there we go there we go that's what I was missing guys I just made more of a mess have we found pawn Okay, what was that? Talk to Alice, there we go. Can't believe I missed those bits of paper. Come on, Alice, warm up to me. We're friends. I'm sure we used to be friends before I was reset. Maybe we can be friends again. You should tell me about yourself. What you like to do, where you like to go, your favorite foods. That would really help me. Your father said you chose my name. Aww. Kara, it's nice. It is How did nice. You choose it? You're very quiet. I hope I don't scare you. What's that she's just given? Oh, a key. Oh god, I just got goosebumps, guys.
I mean, where's the mum? Wouldn't it be a really fucked up twist that Todd has killed the mum? That would be very dark though. Or maybe Todd was actually a nice guy and the mum died from either an accident or cancer or something and uh, since then he's like turned to drugs and has depression and yeah spiralled down really. It can happen to the best of us guys. I Makes mean, they look really happy in that picture. Okay, so that looks like a picture. I mean, that's that's dark. That's blood. Blood on the head and then dripping off. Or at least that's what it looks like to me. Jesus. Okay. Right. I can't tell what's going on in that picture. Whether the dad is hitting the mom, I don't know. Oh no no, hang on, hang on, it's it's Kara. I was getting confused. Right, so yeah. He broke Kara. Confirmed. Confirms he broke Kara. Um, what now? Ask Todd, Todd for new instructions. This is where he's going to get really pissed off. Leave me alone! To my drugs and my sports. What are you doing? Uh, I'm playing. She's just playing? She's just sat there? I know what you're thinking. You think your dad's a low life, huh? Fucking loser. She didn't Can't say anything. Job, take care of his family. Don't you think I tried to make things work? But whatever I do, when someone comes along, they just fuck it all up. Oh shit! I know what you think of me. You hate me. You hate me, don't you? What the fuck, dude? dude? You hate me. Put it down! God. What am I doing? What are you doing? I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know I love you, don't you? He needs help. You know I love you. Holy hell, secrets trophy. Damn. So, okay, let's have a look at this. Oh shit, there's a gun. Oh my God, there's a gun. Kara discovers a way down. We didn't do that. Oh shit, I need to find the gun. Well, where we found the- apparently it's in his room because it branches off from clean Todd's room and the pills were in his room so the gun must be in the room somewhere. I feel like we need the gun because I think Todd is going to um, go into like some kind of blind fit of rage and there's going to be an issue there and it's going to be it's going to be fight or flight, and uh, I, I, I would probably flight with Alice. I mean, we open the window. I mean, the thing is, it says ventilate the room. Kara discovers a way down, so we haven't actually discovered the way down yet either, so we need to do that as well. So I have to remember that when we next play as Kara, um, we're going to have to find the gun and discover a way down, because 
the gun could help. The gun could, like, we could threaten him with the gun, buy some time, and uh, then escape. But I don't want to shoot Todd, though. Right, it looks like we're missing a choice there as well. It's locked. But other than that, I pretty much have done everything on this uh, route, which is quite nice. I feel like I did well. I was a very obedient AI, cleaning up Todd's mess. My god, this is getting dark though, guys. Let me know what you think about this storyline in the comments. Oh, it's so tense. I mean, basically what he was saying to Alice is probably what he sits there and says to himself all the time. It's his own conscious talking to him basically but then he's directing his rage at Alice so yeah um he's broke Kara before he is abusive and we're gonna we're gonna have to protect Alice he's gonna end up going into a fit of rage attacking Alice and we're gonna have to step in as Kara Jesus this game is dark I knew it dealt with some very dark themes but I'm not sure if I'm mentally prepared for this. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, for your love and support in the comments. I look forward to reading what you have to say and, of course, replying to you as well. Don't forget to check out the support links down below in the video description. And, yeah, I look forward to playing more of this game. Take it easy, guys, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye!